Before using any machine in the shop, you should read and understand the owner's manuals. This machine here is our CNC router. This router is controlled by a computer and we program the computer to make the cuts on the table. So we've laid out a design for today, home with South Dakota cut out. We have laid this out in our program that is a CAD CAM program. The CAD is computer-aided design, the CAM is computer-aided manufacturing, and this is going or computer-aided machining, and it's going to allow us to take our design and assign it some different tool paths and then export it, the file, as a G-code so the machine uh, interface can interact with our design. So we've laid it out. I've got some tool paths here that when I click them on, you can actually see what the tool is going to be doing. And we can actually, in this program, it's kind of nice, we can actually run a test piece and preview this and see what our pattern might look like when we're done with uh, all of the details in there. You don't need to worry so much about the CAD CAM program right now. Um, when you get ready to work on this program, I will sit down with you as the instructor and we'll work through this program on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, to get it set up for your needs. So the first thing we need to do when working with this machine is get it on and have it home. So we're gonna come over here to the control module and turn the power on. Then we're gonna come over here to our computer and we have our interface and on our interface, we're gonna hit home. Here's the home button right on top here and, and the machine is going to start to home itself. It's going to make sure it's in the right orientation so that the computer knows how to control the machine because it knows it's home position. All right, now it's homed in the X, Y, and Z axis. Now this machine has some bearings on the spindle that need to warm up. So back on our computer control, we're going to tell the machine to warm up and we're going to click that button. This is gonna cause the machine to come to the center of the table and sit and spin in the warm up position, warming up the bearings in the spindle. So and it's going to go to the center of the table and spin for about 10 minutes to warm up those bearings appropriately. When it's done, the machine's gonna to return to the back far corner. As we're looking at the router table, we have our tabletop surface here and we generally don't wanna cut into that because then it needs to be replaced. So what we have on top of our table is called a spoil board. A spoil board allows us to still vacuum down our workpiece because this MDF allows enough airflow to suck our workpiece down to the spoil board. And if we cut into there, it's not a big deal. That will be changed out. It's a little easier to change than bolting to the table and redrilling all kinds of new, new holes for fixtures. So the first thing we're going to do is line up our spoil board and make sure it's attached in the correct place. So we're gonna do that by popping up the pins on the table. There's a couple pins on here that will help us orientate. So over on the control panel on the computer, we're gonna hit pins. So when we're ready to line up our boards, we click the pin button here in the middle. So you can see how the pins have popped out of the table for quick orientation of the spoil board. Today's piece that we're gonna work on is a smaller piece. Now, so the vacuum table is not going to hold small pieces very well. So what we're gonna to do today is put a scrap piece of wood, it's our particle board here, on top of the spoil board. Then we're gonna turn the vacuum on and that will stay in place and not move. We're going to then screw our board down 
to that scrap board and it's going to hold everything in place so it doesn't move on us. So let's go ahead and get our scrap board pushed into place up tight against our pins. So I've got my scrap piece in place. I'm going to take my board which I have pre-drilled so and countersunk some holes into and we're going to line this up with the corners of my scrap particle board here and get that board lined up. Now if it's not quite square to that particle board, I'm going to just pull it off the edge of the table a little bit so that we can have a square cut. I'm going to take some screws and drive these into that scrap piece. So now my board is secure to the other piece. We could turn on the vacuum to suck this down so it cannot move. For right now, I'm not gonna turn the vacuum on so you can hear me in the video a little bit better. We'll wait a little bit longer to turn the vacuum on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the bit now. We're gonna start with a V-carve bit. So I don't wanna touch the spindle or the router bit while the machine has power. If I turn off the machine while setting up a bit, then I have to rehome the machine all the time. So what we're going to do for safety is we're going to turn the emergency switch off and that is going to prevent the spindle from starting accidentally on us when we're touching our, our bits or blades. So now we're going to go down to the other end of the machine and change the blade. I'm gonna pull off the boot here so that we can get access to the blade. It's just magnetically held on, so you can just pull it straight down. And now we have a collet and a spindle that we need to hold on to while we change the blade. So we're gonna use our wrenches and get into the blade and change that into the spindle here. My wrench for the collet has these little splines on there that need to line up directly on that nut. So each one of those little grooves is going to be into a corresponding groove on the collet. So I'm going to line that up and it should fit on there nice and secure in every groove. Now we're going to take our other wrench and hold the spindle so we can get that on tight. And I like to take my wrench and put it against the base of the machine here. We're not hitting any part of the machine that we could damage, but that way I don't bust my knuckles as I'm loosening it. So I'm gonna put a little pressure, and there it was loose. So now we can take the collet nut and take it off. Now I don't take it all the way off. One problem we have with this particular collet is that the bit gets kind of stuck in there from sawdust buildup and heat. So what we're gonna do is take our wrench and we're gonna lightly tap on the collet nut. Do not hit the threads of the spindle but hit the collet nut. And we're just gonna tap on it. You can see all that dust that came out of there just from one tap. That's what's kind of locking that blade in. So we're gonna turn that around and tap on the other side and just spin it and it should come loose. I got my V bit that we're gonna use and I'm gonna install that straight up in the machine. Again, just like our regular router, we don't want this bit bottomed out. I don't want that bit touching the collet nut, and I don't want that shank bottomed out into the spindle. So make sure you have a little bit of gap there so that it's not bottomed out. And then finish tightening that up with your wrenches. So now that it's secure, we can put our little dust boot back on, and it's just gonna line up here and it magnetically clips into place. And that's all there is to it. Now we need to tell the machine how high the bit is. And there is a button on our interface that will allow the machine to come over and touch base on this puck right here. And it's going to sense where the bit is so that we uh, know the correct location of the bit and we don't cut too deep. So now we're gonna go to the control panel and tell the tool or the machine to measure the tool height. When we click tool height, that's when the machine goes and measures how far out the bit is sticking out of the spindle. 
So I click tool height that's not working. I do need to remember to pop out the emergency stop back into the on position. And now when I hit tool height, the machine will activate and go do its measuring. All right, we're ready to start the machine now. I'm gonna turn the pin, I'm gonna turn the vacuum on first so this stays secure. And then I'm gonna turn the pins off so they go back below the table. We don't run the risk of running into them. And I'm gonna turn the dust system on as well. From my computer, I'm just going to open my file. Hit enter and it's gonna run the job. change the bit out and put the straight bit in to cut the profile. Before I change the bit, I need to turn off the emergency stop so the machine cannot be started on me. Again, we're back here at the, the blade or the knife here and we're gonna change those out with our wrenches again. Remember, each one of those splines needs to fit into the nut there and we will undo that we had a we had a bigger shank in there so we're going to need to change the collet out so we're going to unscrew this all the way Find the appropriate size collet that we need to change to, which is right here, quarter inch. We're gonna start getting that line back up in there. Make sure that nut goes on nice and smooth. No cross threading there. And then we can load our bit in there. And tighten that up. At this point, we'd put that dust shoe back on. We're gonna leave it off for our example so you can better see the machine. Back here at our control panel, we're gonna to click tool height because we changed the bit and it's going to do that code or job. Oh, I still got the emergency switch on, so I'm gonna turn that off. And now hit tool height again. Now we're gonna open up our job, file open pick our profile cut that we have there and hit enter and the machine's gonna run.
When the job's done, it's going to return back to the unload section of the machine. And now we're done. So we can turn the emergency stop on so it doesn't move on us. And we can turn the vacuum off so that it can be uh, let go from the table so it's not sucked down anymore. And that's over here on the wall. And here's our final product. It's the shape of South Dakota cut out with home written in the middle. So let's get this unscrewed and take a look at it. I've got this unscrewed. We're going to take it off the table. You'll notice there's quite a bit of dust buildup. And the reason for that is because I didn't have the dust boot on the machine as it was operating and the dust system wasn't on uh, collecting that dust during this demonstration. But normally we have that dust shoe or boot on as well as the dust system on to help with dust management. Sometimes when we're running our pieces, we program there to be little tabs left in the workpiece. This prevents this piece from moving around once it's been cut. So the tab holds the smaller pieces in place so they don't shift while the blade is cutting around the rest of the profile. So here's our little sign. You can take it over to the orbital sander and clean it up. Uh, again, sometimes you have little tabs on the edge that you will need to get rid of. There's a little remnant of one right there that we would need to go around and sand the edge profile to get rid of those. But for the most part, it should come out pretty clean. You would take those tabs and sand them or use the flush trim router bit and the bearing would ride above there and flush off those tabs. And of course, when we're done, we want to clean up our mess the sawdust and uh, blow it off the machine, sweep it up and put it in the dust system. So this is our CNC router. If you have any questions on how to use it, please ask for help. Talk to your instructor so we can get those questions answered so that you feel comfortable using it and we can use it safely.